blessed. Hallelujah. God bless you. Yes, indeed. God bless. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Before I start, I'm going to pass a one. Silas, come here, baby. I'm going to give an assignment. How about that? <laughs> pass a sheet for everybody. Every yeah, you're going to get one and Silas can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. I take both. The Lord's been um, giving me this word like about a month ago, and it's been in my spirit. Heavy, very heavy. Um, Everybody has a pen or pencil. I need you to write something very, very important. I mean, I <coughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You want to your father, and yeah? you want to sign this, and I like that you keep one. And I want you to write a number from one to ten. This is very important, very, very important. Any number? No, from one to ten. Oh, okay. One to ten. And then from one to ten, you're gonna write quickly. Ten people, ten people from the age fifty and under and younger mm -hmm. that do not know the Lord. In your family, friends, whoever, um, Silas and Elijah, come over here, sit over here. Silas and Elijah, sit here. Here's a pen. <coughs> write the names That's of me. your friends in school. You got ten friends in school. You write them in there. Amen. Everybody gonna participate. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And once we finish, let me know when you're ready so we could pray. <sighs> Pen. <laughs> See if you can find a couple of pens. Yeah, what if they're over 50? Are they yeah. out of the question? Um, no more? <laughs> I'd rather you to be put it from um, 50 and under. And I'm going to tell you why in a few minutes. Okay. It might be um, nephews, nieces, friends of nephews and nieces, people that you know that does not know the Lord. Or they backslid or they're not um, coming to church right now, I need you to write that list. It's very important. Okay. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the heavens. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the heavens. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord Jesus. I adore you, Lord. I exalt you. I magnify your holy name, Lord. Thank Lord. you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank Jesus. You, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Even as I've been working in my job, um, I have been blessed that while I'm working, I could hear the word of God. The eight hours or nine hours or 10 hours that I'm there, I'm listening to the word of God. And I need that because that's my food every day. Every, every, day. every day. Especially in the times that we're living right now. Yes, Lord Jesus. Um, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord we Jesus. come before you. Knowing that you are an awesome God, a mighty God, a redeemer, and a strong tower. Father God, we depend on you, Lord. Holy Spirit, take control, Father God. I give my life away, Lord, so you could use me, Lord. In this time and this season, Lord, as we see what's going on in this earth, oh Lord, 
Father God, sometimes we focus so much in our own issues, That's in our right. own agendas, yes, in our own Lord. problems, Lord. Yes, Lord. We forget Lord. that we are here for your purpose. That's right. Problems, Hallelujah. Father God, I pray, Father God, that the eyes of our understanding will be opened this yes, morning, Lord Father Jesus. God. And it's not my word, it's not my Ooh. message, it's not my own agenda. It's your spirit, Father God, yes. from the throne of God, directly, Father God, to these people, Father God, that they're your people, Father yes. God. And Lord, that it will not stay only with us, for Lord, but it will burn in our spirit, Lord. Just like the, the yes. guys that were walking to Emmaus, Lord, when, when Jesus resurrected and they were saying, when he was speaking, our heart was burning, Lord. Yes. I pray, Father God, that this word will not just be here into the air system, Lord, but it will burn into our hearts and into a spirit, Lord, and that we will not rest, Lord, until everything gets accomplished, Lord. I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, direct our paths, direct our, our conversation this day, Lord. <coughs> Father God, Lord, I pray, Father God, that you will open our hearts and our eyes of our understanding to understand the times and the season, Lord. Yes. In this morning, Father God, Holy Spirit, take control. This is yours, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Um, I believe that you have those people written down. If it not, even when I'm talking, if some name pops up in your mind, please put it in. It's very, very pivotal, very, very important this time. Let's open our Bibles in Ecclesiastic chapter 3. Ecclesiastic chapter 3 and verse 4. Hallelujah. And this word has been in my heart um, for quite a while. And the word of God says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 4, says, A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. But even though I, I read the, the part B, I'm just going to stay with the part A, which it says it's time to be. You done? Okay, sit down and listen. Okay? Thank you. A time to be. <laughs> and not too long ago, the Spirit of God gave me a dream. Two dreams, actually. And the first one was, I heard the voice of God. I was talking to uh, a, a woman of God, a prophet, in the dream. And I said, I call you Deborah. And then as I was talking to her as a Deborah, I heard the voice of God that said, Save the next generation. Save the next generation. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I woke up and I wrote it down. <coughs> and I felt that intrigued in my spirit, save the gen next generation. And I started praying. I said, Lord, it, 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 it hit me hard in my heart because I have the next generation in my home. Yeah. Amen. Yes. And it's very important what are we going to do with my next generation. Amen. And the next dream that I had, God's been talking lately and I'm going to tell you why God is talking so much in dream. I don't know if you've been having dreams, but if you are, write it down. Because it's a message from God to you. Amen. Pay attention. Mm -hmm. And the next dream, I'm, I'm in my work and I'm walking out. As I'm walking out, I see a gentleman. And this gentleman is in heart pain and in, 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 in a uh, 
in agony and I said, can I pray for you? And he said, as long as you pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I said, I will pray in the name of Jesus. And I prayed and he got healed. Amen. I went walking, kept walking and I saw this little girl and she had asthma. And, and I looked at her and I said, you have asthma, I'm gonna pray for you. And she said, no, don't pray for me. I said, well, let me tell you, God healed me out of asthma and I'm gonna pray over you. And I prayed over her and she got healed. As I was walking in the dream, I went into this house and this lady uh, and was with her little child and, and, I, and she was um, talking and I started talking to her about Christ. And she said, I wanna accept Jesus Christ, but wait for my husband. And as the husband came in, I started preaching to them and they got saved. Hallelujah. And as I was walking down the street, all of a sudden, I hear a trumpet sounding. And as I hear the trumpet sounding, I look up and I said, that's the rapture. And when I said, that's the rapture, I, I was picked up and I saw the constellation and I was going through and I saw Jesus. And I said, that's Jesus. And I woke up. And the spirit of God took me to Acts chapter two. What I'm bringing that is, God is talking about the next generation. And, and you might say, well, a time to weep? Yes, a time to weep. It's time to stop being beautiful mm -hmm. and acting like nothing is happening. What is time? Time is a plan, schedule, or an arrangement when someone should act when something should happen or to be done. You set time when you want something to be done. Mm -hmm. Or you schedule something to be done because you want it to get done. <coughs> what is weeping or weep? Weep means to shed tears, to express a grief or a sorrow or any empowerment emotion. God is saying that it's time to set a time to weep. Yes, always. To weep. The church today is not weeping. Mm. The church today is so compromised on building buildings or getting their own agendas to the side of what they want to accomplish. Beautifying the buildings, beautifying the congregation, expanding because they want to be notarized or they want to be known. But that's not the church that God has called. Back when Christianity started, a lot of like Phineas and Wesley, they started crying and weeping for souls. Mm -hmm. right. And the church grew. <coughs> Why are we weeping for? Why are we going to set time for? Because there's oppressed people. Amen. What is it, the meaning of oppressed? Someone to be is burdened with cruel or injustice in positions of restraint. Suggest, suggest to a, a burdensome or a harsh exercise in authority and power. To lie heavy upon the mind and a, pers a person. That dream that I had, I saw the man in oppression. I saw the little girl with sickness. As we go to the stores, as we go to school, as we go to, to work, there's so many people in oppression. Yes. The next generation, that's why I told you to put from 50 down. Look what's happening in the schools. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. yes amen. Mm -hmm. amen. And the Spirit of God been giving me this message almost a month. Say, set time <coughs> to weep. Set time to go into your closet and to your closed chamber and weep for the next generation that is dying and you are responsible for it. You are responsible for it. Amen. I'm responsible. The Lord took me to take a, a board and start writing names and names and names. And I said, oh my God. My home, my family is the next generation. And they are going straight to hell because I'm here sitting down and not crying for them. Where are the Jeremiah's? Yeah. Hallelujah. We are living in such a prophetic time right now. Yes, yes. Even the numbers are, 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 are Adonis, were you able to put it up? Yeah, I think you've got that little part. That's the eight, the eighteen now, the eighteen. That's not the eighteen. Yes, we are living in such a prophetic time. Yeah, we are. And the church is worrying what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> we should be the answer. We should be the solutions. Mm -hmm. We should go back. To our grandparents, our fathers, they used to lock themselves in the prayer chamber. Amen. Amen. And yes. make the devils tremble. And make hell tremble. But the church is trembling from fear. Instead of rising up. Now look at your list that you wrote in that paper. <coughs> in those people that you put there. See, I, have, I need to create a vivid, what God was creating to me, a vivid picture. Look at those names. And how about you see a casket in their life? How will you feel? If they were falling into the lake of fire, how will you feel right now? Wouldn't it be different? Yes. Wouldn't you pray differently? Amen. Yes. God will hold you accountable for those people. You know the truth. But we're not doing anything. Jesus himself weeped. And Jesus didn't just weep because of weeping. If we look in John chapter 11, verse 35, in the story of Lazarus, a lot of people look at like Jesus was crying because of Lazarus. Jesus was not crying because of Lazarus, because he knew that Lazarus was dead, died. He knew, that's why he said, let me go later on yes. for the glory of God to be. Manifest. Amen. Yep. The reason that Jesus whipped was because the doubt of the famine. That's right. Amen. They knew that Jesus was the resurrection and the life. And Jesus himself told them, I am the resurrection. Yes. But because he was there with them and they still could not conceive that the power of God was there in front of them. And we should weep for this generation because the power of God, <coughs> I guess it's because they're not seeing the light in us or the flame in us that they cannot see the difference. And we have to question ourselves. That's the spirit God was telling me. If you go to your work, if you go to the store 
and they cannot see something shining on you, you have to question. Oh, Jesus. Those people have to see you like that gathering man when he saw Jesus, he threw himself in his feet and said, please help me. This new generation has to see you that way. Amen. They have to. Yes. Amen. They have to see us. That we have the answer. That we have what they're looking for to be delivered. But they're going into psychiatric treatment. They bring them to church. Okay, you need counseling. <clears throat> you see your children or your grandchildren locked up in a room and not wanting to come out and have you know communion with you guys and they're just always locked up playing games something is wrong you're letting that next generation go to hell it's time to weep it's time to forget about me. Amen. And brother was just thinking that, Lord, That's use right. me. Use me. Lord, use me. And he's been telling you, get in my John Burry and cry until there's no more strength in you. Amen. For Peter, for Paul, for Elijah, for Ezekiel, for them. Jesus himself, in Luke chapter 19, verse 44, 41 to 44, he said he saw the city. Oh. Yes. And he weep. Yeah, he Amen. We see in our city in fire, in <coughs> death, in agony. And what do we do? What do we do? We're just saying, Oh my God, I can't believe this. Oh, Jesus. No. Throw yourself into the closet chamber and say, God, give me the city. Give me the souls of these Amen. young kids. Amen. Hallelujah. We are so in a prophetic time right now Amen. that there's no time only to pray and intercede like never before. Hallelujah. Yes. To break our hearts like never before. Jesus himself in Luke chapter 22 verse 44. was in Gethsemane, crying, weeping for the world. Hallelujah. He's setting us an example. Yes. And we're supposed to be the explosion of this world. Amen. But the only way we could do that is through prayer. Jesus put in himself prayer and weep. But today, we just want to do beautiful prayer. Lord, please help yep. my brother. Help my sister. No, you have to be broken. Pretend it's you that's going through what it's going through. Pretend it's your own children's going. Pretend that your children are the one right there suffering that that. That's what's happening in the school. You put yourself in the position. Like the mother of getting the news. And cry. Hallelujah. Cry. We need to cry. And we don't have tears saying, Holy Spirit, give me some tears. Give me, let my eyes, like Jeremiah said, let my eyes be a fountain. For the souls. Mm -hmm. 
Jesus himself, the tears were falling and it was like blood. And only in certain occasions, tears come as blood, but that's because there's so much stress in the body. Amen. And Jesus was receiving that stress, and God, the Holy Spirit, wants us to feel the same thing because we are in pivotal times. Amen. There's no time to joke. There's no more time to just sit in church and say, I'm going to church. If you cannot go outside That's right. and preach the gospel, get in the closet and say, Lord, my neighbor needs you, Jesus. Lord, give him a revelation. Lord, this one, give me the opportunity and cry <coughs> and cry and do not stop crying until that person comes to God. We in Isaiah were called to open the prisons. We were the ones to call to open the prisons, to heal the broken hearted. Not just look at the news and be like everybody else and call your neighbor. You see what happened? Oh my God, I can't believe it happening. Another shooting in school. What are you doing about it? What are you doing? Because pretty soon the trumpets are going to sound. And God is going to tell you how come you were not in the, in, in, the, <coughs> in the line for that person. If we look... In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, right next to it, in verse 1, he says, and this is Solomon, the chosen one, that God blessed them with mighty things and blessed them with everything. He should have enough time to intercede for the oppressor, right? Amen. But he didn't. And he says, then I return and consider all the oppression that is done under the sun. And look, the tears of the oppressed, but they have no comforter. Solomon saw the oppression of the oppressed and saw the tears. And he said that there was no comforter. He had everything. How come he did not comfort those oppressed people? It looks a picture of our own selves. God blesses us with everything. God is calling us to weep. Adana's, can I get that number or Anna? We are so in the prophetic right now. If you were, you know, miss a little part here. But uh, number 18, this is how prophetic we are. The church doesn't know it, but we are soldiers in a prophetic service right now, in the prophetic time. Because number 18, the year 2018, the number 18 in Hebrew is a Zion. It looks like that. And if you look, it looks like a little man kneeling down with the hands up. The letter Zion means seen. Seeing, vision, seeing, God is showing the church that they need to kneel down with your hands up and intercede because it's a prophetic year. It's the year new beginning, number eight. But in the number 18, it has the equivalent of 90. 
which will be life, bearing life. So this is the year that God is telling you, you need to see. With your knees kneeling down, with your hands up, to bring life to the next generation. Amen. Let not the next generation go to hell. Mm. 